Today we have a special uh, guest, Malcolm Greenfield, who is the author of many, many different books, uh, ranging from, from cookery to, <laughs> to, the, <laughs> to the yeah, to the off I've got I got some great, great, great fruit, fruit. Freshwater Life, very, very, very interesting book he wrote uh, using uh, museum specimens. But today our story is about a particular creature, which is called Chinese meat and crab, a recent, uh, relatively recent in, 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 introduced species to the British uh, waters, and this is what we are going to talk about. Mom. Correct. Well, this is the first one I've seen in Britain, and it's the last one I've seen in Britain. What it is, is... First of all, why is it called a mitten crab? If you can see that fuzz and the claws. Now, of course, a mitten, if I put a mitten on, there's the claws and there's the mitten. Show different different parts of the crab. Yeah. Right, well, this is this is the crab. When it's a larva, the tail is out. It's much slenderer and it can swim and it uses the tail to swim, help it swim. Uh, and then the tail moves under, it falls onto earth and becomes a crab or to the bottom of the sea. Um, it can swim a little bit, notice the swimming, the, the fringes at the side to help it swim a little. It can't swim very well, but it can swim a little. Uh, there's the mitten that we talked about, with the claw sticking out. And it's quite a soft, quite a soft spongy, it's almost like... This is an adult. Uh, of course, that's as big as they get. There's the mouth parts, the jaws that they use, with little limbs that are used, little jointed limbs there that are used to manipulate the food. Uh, they're nocturnal, tend to feed nocturnally in fresh water. Um, and hopefully, if they are in the river, the otters will eat them all. And what happened with this deer specimen, I used to go out on the estuary, river estuary, with uh, a, a guy who netted salmon. And it was given the opportunity to look at the estuary, which I've been working on for years, from the inside rather than wandering on foot around the outside. We were sitting in the boat, and he has a, a net out, about 100 metres net, across the estuary, as the tide ebbs, and slowly we work our way down from below Preston, right the way out to Lillens and Tans, when low tide, we get we stranded, we can't do anything, and he pulls the net in. And as he pulls the net in, there are flounders, flat fish in the net, which we put back, and there are ordinary shore crabs. And on this particular day, which was in June 2007, in the net, I saw this creature with its mittens, and I shouted, Ray, whatever you do, don't put that one back, I want it. And so I grabbed it, took it home, and now it resides in the University Museum in a jar of alcohol. Could you tell us, when did this crab first appear in the European waters? It was first recorded in German estuaries. What seems to have happened is that of course, its origin is China, hence Chinese mitten crab. That some ships coming back to Germany put seawater ballast in their hold to stabilise them coming back because they had a light weight. And in that water would be uh, the motile, the swimming um, larvae of these crabs. And this water, when they got back to Germany, was offloaded into the sea. The crabs started feeding and off we went. So it was 1912. It spread quite quickly through down to Portugal and along through France, Portugal, and then along to the Scandinavian countries. It didn't arrive in Britain until 1935, when the first was recorded in the Te in the Thames estuary. Again, possibly brought all the way from Germany, not necessarily. The next record was 1949, which is 14 years later, and that was in a canal in West Yorkshire, in, in uh, Castleford. That must have come up the Humber system, and then. Very little extra until the year before I found this, in 2006, one was recorded uh, in the Welsh Dee, so that counts as a Welsh record, and this is the first one for Lancashire and the northwest of England. Humans are entirely responsible, as alas we have been with lots of beasts like this. And there is a major problem with it. The major problem is that most crabs live in the sea, like our shore crab, like our edible crab. But this one is a sort of split personality. The adults spawn in the sea and the female looks after the eggs for about six or seven weeks and when the eggs hatch, she's free to do what she wants and the eggs, the eggs are hatching to larvae which swim around. And when they get to a suitable size, they settle on the seabed 
as crabs and they start crawling and they crawl up river. And they, in China they've been known to go beyond 1500 kilometres inland. On the Dee in Wales a friend of mine has found them at Bangor on Dee and I'm looking for them this year to see what numbers there are in the Ribble, the freshwater Ribble. The thing about them is that they're highly carnivorous. They will devour anything they can get hold of. So for example if you think of salmon fry, uh, salmon eggs, they, they would probably dig up the, the reds, the eggs for, of salmon in winter and eat those. So there's a great threat to the natural wildlife of our rivers. The other thing is that they burrow into the banks. They live there quite a long time, they'll be big burrows. And of course as soon as you burrow into banks, immediately you increase erosion. One of the great problems we have on all our rivers is the amount of erosion that is occurring due to cattle and sheep chewing up the bank. Rivers are getting wider and wider and therefore shallower and shallower. And with global warming and possibly much longer dry periods like the one we recently had, wildlife is under stress and this just adds to that stress. And so it's important we, we look for it and we collect them. And, but whether we'll ever be able to get without them. Yeah. Are there any means to control this crab? The only way you could do it is rather like a very, a very similar to the American signal crayfish, which is ended to put our own native crayfish endangered. Uh, we try to get rid of them, which is very, very, very difficult to do because these things are nocturnal. Mm -hmm. Not many of us go wandering around with pod nets in the middle of the night. And uh, they're, they're there wandering around. We don't even know they're there unless you have somebody with a net who managed to find one living under a stone during the day. But, or his but how otherwise could we notice their presence? Maybe some remains of their activities? Or some well, remains of, their activities? Uh, the, of course these when they're adult will move back to sea. And so what you don't get, which you de or tend not to get, which is what you get with the American crayfish, is the American crayfish you wander up the top of the ribble where they've arrived recently and knocked out on native crayfish. You, you find the shells, the, the claws of ones, for example. But occasionally, if you look out, otters have increased on our rivers. And otters will love to eat these if they get hold of them. Yeah. So what you do is you look for one that an otter's had a chew off and you find bits of claw and get them in. And in fact, it's worth it if you ever go near a river uh, and you find bits of claw of any animal, any sort of shrimp, prawn, anything you think it looks like, please get them to us at the museum. We can identify them, can't we? It's a good way for recording things like this. Yeah. Any little bits of claw you see on a stone or at the side of a river if you're paddling, bring it up and let us have it. Yeah. And it's fine. Do you think the, the public, people who live living around could help in controlling or monitoring the, the presence the, of this? The thing to do is if you find something you can identify it. And you should do this with any dead piece of wildlife, even though Museum curators like Dimitri find it a bit of a pain in the neck, but get them to the museum because the museum is the people who could identify them. And if you get them to the museum, you find out what they are, and the museum helps us work out the range of these sort of animals. And that's what we've got to do. Excellent. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. No, thanks for asking me. It's grateful.